Hello everyone and welcome to another Midnight Rand. I haven't done this in a while, so I've got a little bit of housekeeping to do. What you keep hearing in the background is the theme from Skyjacker, which um, <clears throat> the nice people who developed the game uh, allowed me to feature on this podcast because they are trying to raise money for their game on Kickstarter. As you can see, they are um, three weeks away from the end of the campaign and have still a lot of money to go. Skyjacker is a game, a science fiction space exploration and uh, combat game that sounds and looks absolutely fantabulous. Um, they themselves call it a mixture of GTA and Wing Commander and I think that in itself is brilliant and um, I love the designs I love the concept and I also love this amazing soundtrack so I'll link to the campaign underneath this post if you have any time to spare this is where to spend it but I'm not here to talk about Kickstarter only <clears throat> Because currently I am in the OpenSim creation. This is a cool mask, by the way. I got this from Archive 3D. I'm gonna link to it too. Um, looks a bit creepy, um, but I, I love love the effect that it it has. It's kind of hard to adjust to my face because I've found that my face is actually a little bit long, at least longer than the face that used that was used for this mask. Anyway, this is a nice mesh object. I'm going to link to it under the post as well. But where I am is the OpenSim Creations Grid, which I opened about two weeks ago. And um, the reason for this is that people can get easy in-world access to OpenSim Creations through the Hypergrid. Currently, I'm working on getting most, if not all, the creations from these from the website onto the grid. Um, the one region that is most where, where you can get the most stuff is the path. We'll go there in a minute when I show you what's coming up. But first, as something else I want to show that is pretty cool because OpenSim Creations is also has a nice outlet on Hyperica if you go to oh yeah and the address for OpenSim Creations is OpenSim-Creations.com port 9000 let me type it in here OpenSim-Creations.com 9000 uh, that should be sufficient if you want to go to a specific region you make another colon and uh, then type the region the m default one is the palm house but there's others to explore in a minute <coughs> first let's go to Hyperica which is hg.hyperica.com port 8022 and um, that should be enough. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> because R Maria was nice enough to give me a little parcel on the Hyperica regions. Hyperica regions are, if nobody's ever been there, um, usually a nice place to start exploring on the hypergrid. Uh, you can get hyper gates here. You can get some quick links to popular destinations and um, some information about the hypergrid itself. It can serve as a meeting place for uh, explorers. And there is a nice section behind the hypergates where she made 
th room for some uh, people who are creating things for the hypergrid to have a little stores or something that will um, kind of lead people to their site. So, in addition to Linda Kelly and I think the store is called Lanny International or just Lanny, who have the Dune Sims on Osgrid and also make a lot of amazing, cool, free stuff. Open Sim Creations has a little. Um, there's someone. Another one. Here, this is ah. Uh, if it would res, we'd be able to tell. GovGrid. This is Pombro Pembroviac. Um. And opposite of that, I've made a little display for Open Sim Creations. I didn't put a lot on it because honestly, um. I wouldn't know where to start if I wanted to give some of what we all made away here. So basically it'll lead people to the website if you click on it. And of course whatever is displayed there is free for copy and reuse. Um, and if you zoom on it, it will kind of tell you a little bit about what open some creations is this is a nice screen effect that I've learned from Robin Huffaker's sculpt tutorials I might link to that too uh, my great banner doesn't want to res anyway this is um, a nice spot that I've got here Let's see. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is what I'm currently working on with. Ah, oh, crap. Um, open minus creation. Come. 9000. The path. <coughs> oh crap. Okay. Let's go back to open some creations and uh Don't you love the hypocrite? Have a quick look around at what you can get there at the moment. Um, there isn't a whole lot on it. Uh, honestly, I just set up some regions and loaded some OERs on it. So this one at the south here is the landscape showcase sim which features a lot was made by handheld and features Alicia Stone's landscaping packs all of them are of course free I've got the palm house of course which is really just a meeting place there are not there isn't much to get on it I mean most of what you see you can copy but the way it's designed is that it's just a gathering place and a starting place for people and you can watch movies here currently we are still running elephant stream so if you haven't watched it go soon because come Ju July we will change it to a different movie um, then I've got Ruben Hans Gun City OAR here, uh, you can't see much from here because the city is actually 
in the sky. It's a nice cyberpunk style sim that has a lot of room to put um, creations on it. So I'll work on that with the space stuff we have. Then, of course, I've, we've got one region here featuring the far away by AM radio. And then we've got two more regions, one for the upper hypergrid and one for the lower hypergrid. The one at the lower hypergrid is the path, which if you remember is one of the tutorial region, uh, is a tutorial region I have made a while ago and never finished. But now I've been con working on it some more and put um, several more creations on it that anyone can that are free for a copy and uh, take home with you and as you see this tutorial parts are still on it I'm planning on expanding them some more um, but first I want to get more creations on it still more creations on it it has this <coughs> house that you might know already but now it's more furnished with the art deco furniture I've made whoops Let's zoom around here and I uploaded the pub which you can find here and which has got even more furniture in front and inside like this here and these <coughs> Coming next to the path is probably some, and I still and I've got that running on my own standalone uh, where I'm putting stuff together before I upload it. I'll probably upload some more animations, um, walk animations and clothes, and then some tutorials on how to use animations, how to use clothes, how to uh, find your way around in the world, and then mm, it should be pretty close to being complete um, so that um, I can go on to a different region. I don't want to put too much stuff on it because then you know it'll lag too much. <coughs> so there's always some balance to strike between um, having too much and too little things on a region. Um, next to this here is an a region I'm working on which uses as a base the m mall OAR from. Audi, I think. Let me see. Um, hmm. It's also from the side. Um, she made this region with just empty shops for anyone who needs to create a mall. And it looks really, really nice. And I use this as for... for um, to collect adult things like skins and um, adult animations and gadgets. So <coughs> I'm still working on that too. Uh, it features another nice mesh that I got from Archive 3D here where the art is. This is art, this is not porn. Um, 
and then next to this I'm working on the city where I can show even more buildings from the site and anything that is kind of urban like my fountain I think we've got some other fountains on the side as well and you know cars and stuff these cars are actually not from OpenSim Creations they're my personal backups anyway that is work in progress mm, what I want to cover today is Um, actually something completely different. I've read, um, oh yeah, let's see, the mall. Mm -hmm. There we go. The Mall OER by Oddball O'Toole. This is what I've used for the mall. Uh, you can get it from opensimcreations.com. And use it for your own OpenSim. I wanted to talk about a comment Maria Karlov left on I live isl.com where Inner Hacks wrote about freebies and if they are bad for the virtual world marketplace. Maria says um, basically she says that freebies bottom line is freebies are great for OpenSim because without them there would be not very little we could use but what she wants to have is Pricier stuff, fancier designer clothing, latest trends. Um, <clears throat> I've got a few issues with this comment and I would like to talk about them. Um, first off, the feeling that I've, I'm getting is that there is this... Uh, um, distinction between freebies and priced content and the distinction is not just because the one thing costs something the other doesn't but apparently with the fact that something costs something goes the um the natural leap to the thought that the thing that costs something is of higher quality and while i can understand this assumption from a psychological point of view it kind of does not hold water if you look at the fabulous it doesn't hold water if you look at all the great stuff that is available for free and I don't want to toot my own horn um, so even though I, and I have to say this I've been through open some creations to the whole website lately to make sure that all the um, creations are properly attributed and show the right license and I've seen some amazing things that I almost forgot about it already that people have made and uploaded and are sharing for free on OpenSim creations but not just there if you think about how much on the web is really great 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 stuff that you can get absolutely for free and that does not have to shun any comparison to commercial things. Um, just thinking about, um, well, if we start at really 3D uh, stuff, then there are several uh, websites that share 3D meshes for f absolutely free. Archive 3D is one that I've mentioned before, and I want to mention it again because it's full of awesome, awesome things that are absolutely free. Um, BlendSwap is another one. And they don't have to shun the comparison to commercial sites like TurboSquid. Um, because, frankly, from quality and, and volume, there is no difference. Rather, the freebie sites usually have more stuff 
and greater stuff on them. It's not quite as good organized, even though Archive 3D is amazingly good organized. Um, so we usually assume that when we paid for something it has to be more valuable because we associate value with money. Um, so I understand the fact that Maria thinks like that. I just want to remind her and everyone else that actually if you think about it, if you look at the reality of what is going on right now everywhere, this is just not true. But that's actually a minor point. Um, another little point is that she mentions again, and I've seen her say that before, that she would love to have high priced content that she can go shopping for her avatar and want stuff that she can not only use in one grid but in <coughs> on the hypergrid. And there's two things that I have to say about this. First off, uh, fret not because actually you already can shop for things that you can use anywhere in any environment. It's just not a specifically open sim targeted marketplace but you can get on websites like turbosquid.com um, meshes for any occasion for anything really professional really really nicely high quality meshes for as high a price as you would like and I'm not just talking about furniture and objects but also about things like custom avatars um, you can use uh, I mean since we since Second Life since OpenSim supports all kinds of meshes you can of course replace your avatar mesh with any other mesh avatar and use that as instead um, so if you were inclined to do so you can buy high class avatars for 500 US dollars and use them instead of the avatar you have and buy some clothes for them or maybe they already come with clothes and um, you might maybe need to pay some professional to tweak it a little so it'll work in OpenSim but you know th there are possibilities it's not the perfect possibility in that it'll serve and it gives you the the shopping feeling that you would get if you were in second life or in a in a shop in second life but you know there are possibilities already the other thing is that if you again if you if you compare that to freebies um the fact that there is not so much thing on the hypergrid is more a licensing issue than anything else because of course you can buy things in Second Life and you can buy things in, in commercial grids that you can then use in that grid. The thing is they just don't let you uh, export them t for use in, in the hi on the hypergrid and that is not a technical limitation because you know there are technical ways around that but it's more a licensing issue because you would break the license under which you gotten the item if there is a license at all usually many mar many merchants don't even license their stuff and so you you know it's it's basically copyrighted to them and you can you know use it at your own risk um if you compare that to freebies then you will find that many many freebies and OpenSim Creations has made it a habit to do so are licensed under very clear and very public and open licenses that actually expressly allow you to use this creation anywhere you want and even modify it build upon it and pass it on so from a license point of view Again, freebies are actually the 
much better alternative because they let you do more of the stuff that commercial licenses don't let you do. And I'm not really not talking just about OpenSim creations. Um, I'm talking about sites like BlendSwap.com where also you can get free um, creations, this time for Blender, hence the name. Um, all kinds of stuff. Avatars, uh, m furniture, weapons. There's a lot of weapons because, you know, I don't know, probably a lot of game creators are, use, uh, are sharing their stuff. That you can use also by converting them to a Colada mesh in OpenSim. And they, too, are most of the time licensed as Creative Commons or even as public domain without any license at all. So the the complaints don't hold a lot of water. Um, she goes on to say that what uh, gives some tips to creators how they can make a business and 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 turn their products into profit profit um, <coughs> even on the hypergrid. Which is okay, I don't really uh, agree with all of them, but um, and I don't really like the, the, the underlying comparison all the time by comparing the pricey stuff, the, the, the thing that costs something, to high quality items and freebies to crap. But um, <coughs> I, I, it's just me. The one problem that, I, that I've got with this is, and this is really something that is serious to me, um, she's encouraging to use the DMCA process to go after distributors who would get you, who would distribute your stuff illegally. Um, I think this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Don't do it. Do not use DMCA ever. The DMCA process, process is highly controversial, has been from the start, um, and it can easily be abused. Um, there has lately been a little bit of a drama in Second Life where a skin creator um, accused another skin creator of copying her product and it's always used it, it, they use DMCA but actually it's not been DMCA she produced a Canadian court order that would you know um, force Linden Lab to remove that infringing content and if you look closely at it Actually, it's the other way around. It looks a lot like it's the other way around that the alleged infringer actually was the original creator and the person who accused that them um, was copying her stuff. Um, but this is an example of what would be possible under DMCA. You can just go ahead and accuse anyone of infringing of your stuff, infr infringing your stuff on your stuff and uh, the platform provider has no other choice than to remove the inf allegedly infringing content until the um, accused files a counter DMCA claim and then they can reinstate it. Um, it's easy to see how this process can be misused and is being misused. If you just want to silence competition even just for a little while even just maybe for a I don't know an an event a, a fashion event or something a fair then this is the way to do it you know and encouraging people to use the DMCA will probably lead to more abuse of the DMCA than it would use would lead to mm, a better DMCA process. 
it would encourage people to use the DMCA who don't even have a right to use the DMCA because the DMCA only allows people to who are only allows the original creator of something to go after infringing people. If anyone files a DMCA who is not the original creator and just to notice you know to, to notify that grid operator that they have infringing content on their grid, then this is actually an abuse of the DMCA process. Um so please do not encourage anyone to use DMCA. It's it's horrible. It's it's horrible and it is being misused and it will be misused. There are better ways. Also, um the DMCA process only works within the American legal system. That means if the grid provider is in America some grid providers don't really know that and they will still respond to DMCA notices even if they don't have to because they're somewhere else um, which also sends a chilling effect across the entire world you know and you never it, it sends a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt all over the place and um, the DMCA Well, I lost my train. Doesn't really protect what it's supposed to protect. It's 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 a completely voluntary. Uh, it's just it's on a trust basis. You don't even have to prove that someone infringes upon your stuff. You just say they do and the grid provider, the platform provider has no other way than to oblige and take the infringing, the allegedly infringing content down. Um, the other effect that this has is that it puts a lot of stress on the grid providers and I think it's very likely that instead of just taking the infringing content down they also will kick the alleged infringer of the grid because they just don't want to deal with the drama. So um, it might cause, even if it's not justified, and even it I if it is counter-claimed, um, someone to lose their account and their livelihood if they depend on the sales they get from that grid. And uh, as you can see, it can be misused and it will be misused. There is, because we're talking about fashion here most of the time, when, when we talk about infringing things, there is a really, really nice TED talk, I will link to it, um, that you should see by Johanna Blakely, um, who talks about how copyright works in fashion. Because the truth is, it doesn't. There is no copyright for real life fashion. Fashion is not copyrighted. Anyone can copy anything. And the way this works is it works absolutely swell. It creates an economy of innovation where people are, where, where designers are pressured to innovate constantly in order to stay ahead of the curve and also an economy of sharing where people can freely uh, copy other people's um, creations and uh, produce them themselves and turn a profit by using cheaper materials than the... Uh, you know, you, ha you are forced to mm, accept the fact that everything that can be copied will be copied and live with that and it works fine it works just fine and it has been working fine forever there never was copyright for fashion and nobody says that the fashion industry is about to die i think they are doing perfectly well in fact their profits far eclipse the profits of the whole of the ip industries all movies, books, music, 
software combined. So I think, you know, if we are getting bent out of shape over IP infringements, as we call them, in virtual worlds, most of the time because of virtual fashion, I think we should pause a minute and think about how things are being done in the real world and uh, that it's not all gloom and bad and especially and this is dear to my heart do not encourage legal procedures when there's doubt about if something went wrong at all do not encourage people to use uh, very easily abusable legal proceedings like the DMCA process. It's it, It'll just create drama and uh, the outcome in most cases is not satisfactory. Thank you very much. That was it for today. Uh, see you some other time. Goodbye.